What's going on racers and thank you for tuning in for another episode of JB Trickle RC. This particular episode we're going to be covering some speed secrets for the tracks of Slash and some of this information is also going to transfer over to your two wheel drive open buggy classes. Whether you're racing a B4 or a B6, it don't matter. The same information is going to translate over for you too. Now, let me go ahead and start off and say to you experienced racers that may be watching the video, uh, you're probably going to watch this episode and go, I knew that already, or I do something a little bit different, I do something similar, so on and so forth. This video is targeted towards those newer racers or racers that may be struggling in this area. Um, so what we're going to be doing is um, I've got two speed secrets in the video. The first one is going to be in two phases. We're going to be dealing with the Traxxas slash transmission and the Traxxas slash uh, slipper. Okay, that's going to be the main focus is going to be that transmission area of the car. Speed secret number two, we're going to be talking about some rear toe in these cars and what you can and can't do, what classes you might be able to do, what classes uh, you might not be able to use, and then so on and so forth. Um, but the, the first speed secret we're going to be going over, the transmission area of the car, should be pretty helpful. That's going to be the biggest takeaway from this video. Uh, the second speed secret is more of a personal preference. If you try it, you may like it, you may hate it, I don't know, uh, but it's worth a try if you're allowed to do that. Um, but we'll get into that more in the video. Uh, but again, guys, as always, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. With all that said, let's get right to it. All right, guys, here we go. Speed secret number one for the Traxxas Slash. And again, some of this information will translate to some of the like uh, two-wheel drive buggy classes for dirt oval and so on and so forth. And I just want to say again, this is mainly for dirt oval, especially the uh, speed secret tip number one that we're going to be going over. Now, the main focal point for this in the Traxxas Slash, this is my newer 10.5 late model. Um, got it from a buddy of mine recently. That's the reason it's missed some electronics. I still got to put some of my stuff in it to get it up and running. But our main focus and speed secret number one that I want to go over with you guys is we're going to be focusing in this area here. We're going to be dealing with the transmission. Okay, so um, I've got two tracks of slashes. This is my new 10.5. The other one is my son's uh, breakout car for the kids class. And luckily, I already have that transmission out. So this is gonna be the focal point for speed tip number one for the Traxxas Slash. Okay, so what's the secret behind this Traxxas Slash transmission? Um, whenever these things first come from the factory, uh, you're gonna have the differential inside the car, then of course your other transmission gears, um, the slipper clutch and all that kind of stuff. But whenever you get a brand new Traxxas Slash, one thing that is often overlooked is the transmission. Um, what do I mean by that? From the factory in the transmission case itself, it's going to have a very thick and heavy grease. And in the differential, it's going to have a very thick and heavy grease as well. And uh, what that does, is that's going to slow up how the differential actually kind of works. Um, so one of the common tips and one of the most overlooked things is not opening up the transmission, getting that cleaned out and rebuilding the transmission. Um, so that's one of the most often overlooked things for these Traxxas Slash uh, classes, as well as like the two wheel drive open buggy class. Like I said, a lot of the transmission information we're going to go over is going to translate to that as well. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to break this thing down and we're going to get it cleaned out. Now, granted, this one's already been through, okay? But I'm going to tell you about what you're going to be looking for, what we're going to do anyway, and I'm going to rebuild the transmission together with you. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and uh, start tearing this thing down. Okay, so we have all the screws out. Then you're going to notice on the bottom of the transmission case, now this is a bigger piece because I replaced this on all mine, but if you look at that, there's going to be an open side where you can see the gear and stuff. And we'll replace that with some fresh vinyl here in a little bit. But with that, let, let that said, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Here we go. So as you can see, there is some residual grease. I haven't rebuilt this thing in a while. Um, so it's uh, kind of overdue anyway. Uh, but what we're going to do what we got the case open is we're going to go ahead and clean that up and get all that old grease out of here. And uh, there's several ways to do that, but I'm usually going to use like a, a toothbrush, uh, a old towel, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get all that stuff cleaned up and out of there. Got some shims you want to be mindful of. Then on the other side, we're going to go ahead and start sliding some of these out. 
and uh, we're going to be looking those over, getting those cleaned up as well. So here's the actual differential that we're going to be opening up and reworking as well. So we're going to set that to the side and we're just going to slide these out for the time being. And before we take this off, I just want to point out something here. Take notice of the position of the uh, clutch adjustment screw there, the spring. All right, see how the coils, there's a pretty good space there. If this is from the factory brand new, you're probably going to be looking like that. It's not going to be compressed. It's going to be set to where the slipper is going to be able to engage and so on and so forth. We're going to be going over this area here again shortly. Uh, but we're building up to that point. The two main things that we're talking about in this section here is gonna be number one, rebuilding the diff, getting that stuff cleaned up, and then we're gonna be talking about the slipper clutch itself. That's the whole gist of the speed secret uh, tip one, which kind of comes in two parts. But I just wanted you to take notice of about, that's probably where about the factory is gonna be set at, and we're gonna be changing that shortly. Same thing, we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Checking the bearings. Okay. So now the case is pretty much clean. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at these gears and we're gonna get these cleaned up as well. All of them. We're gonna check the bearings and everything, get all this stuff cleaned up as well. Okay, so now we pretty much have the, uh, everything's cleaned up, pretty much ready to go back together. Um, I'm gonna clean up another bearing here. I've already checked the bearings. Um, all the bearings still feel fine. Um, but that is another speed secret for you that you can look into. Some classes are going to allow this, some are not. But you can always look at getting some better bearings, ceramic bearings, you know, some kind of an upgraded bearing of, of your choosing and swap out throughout the whole car, you know, uh, for the axles and so on and so forth, the transmission as well. You can always upgrade those. Now, if you're running a box stock class, you might not be able to. So I, I'm, you're going to hear me say this more than one time in this video. Verify your rules before you do you know, bearing changes and so on and so forth. But as far as building the diff the way I'm gonna build it, it shouldn't be a problem, because this is part of maintenance, but we're still gonna get that diff clear, cleared out. So at this point now, we're gonna take this differential apart as well. There we go. Okay. So now again, you're gonna see a little bit of residual um, from my previous build on this. Um, you're going to see all these little gears and everything in here, and then you're going to see the oils low and so on and so forth. Um, but it's, like I said before, it's time to clean it up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take all these out, and we're going to get this cleaned up as well, just like we did the rest of the transmission. And again, I just do, I do want to say, if this is fresh from the factory, this thing's going to probably be encased with some very thick and heavy-duty type grease. Um... I've seen this stuff so thick before the, the differential barely even wanted to rotate. So that's what we're going to do is just get this cleaned out the best that we can, um, which can be a little bit tough, but we're going to get all that cleaned out the best that we can. And I, this thing's already been, I mean, you're going to have to spend more time on this than I'm doing in the video because one, this is a tutorial and two, I've already gotten the heavy grease out of this one point in time before because this is, uh, it's been overdue for a rebuild, but, <coughs> excuse me. All right. Now this still has some of my other fluids and stuff in it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this down because I'm gonna be putting the same stuff I've used in the past back in here. So we're just gonna get those wiped down real good. Now again, if it's got the heavy grease, you're probably gonna have to use a toothbrush or a pick or, or whatever and get all that crud out of those gears, but I've pretty much already got it out, okay? So now we're gonna be able to put this back together. Let's see. All 
Now here, now that we have these ready to go back together, here's the secret. Instead of that thick, heavy oil or grease that they use, I like to use 30 weight shock oil. Sounds crazy, but it works. Yes, the diff will hold it. Um, yes, you're gonna have to go in and rebuild it every now and then because over time it will seep out. Um, somebody's, uh, some of my buddies put like a little drop of uh, uh, like little silicone in the thread holes to help hold it and so on and so forth. But generally it will hold the shock oil pretty good, um, but you do need to stay on top of it. This was actually a little bit dry. Um, like I said, I was overdue for rebuild, but you don't want that thick grease in there. You want this, you want this differential to work. Um, and be as free as you can get it. And we're gonna talk about that more whenever we finish this speed secret. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take my 30 weight, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And I'm not gonna pack it. I'm not packing the whole thing or anything. I just, I'm gonna run it up till it probably touches those bottom gears a little bit, because then whenever it's sitting, it's gonna be able to spread. Do not pack it. I wouldn't even quite go halfway. It might be barely to the halfway. I'm gonna say more like a third is what I generally do. All right, so you wanna make sure that this pin goes back into the other hole and these little um, uh, keepers right here are gonna slide over those pins. So this is a directional, and it also has these little um, guides right here to show you the correct way to put it on. And then we're just gonna slide that on. Probably gonna have to kind of work the gear a little bit, okay? And now whenever I spin that, that is pretty nice and free right there. So, again, over time, it is going to seep out the car. And we're going to put this back together. Okay. So now that we got that back together, it's going to feel nice and smooth. This oil is going to be a lot, uh, a lot thinner than the uh, grease that they put in there. And guys, I just want to say, I know that this 30 weight shock oil sounds crazy. I totally get that. Um, but this is a secret that I've used for years. You can use many other things and many other, my, uh, many of my other RC racing friends use other stuff too. And I'm going to tell you some other options you might want to try and see what you like best. The 30 weight shock oil is, has been, a, a thing that I've a technique and, and a, a diff fluid that I've used for these kind of diffs and um, buggies and and the tracks of slash since I've been dirt oval racing for for many years. So it's just something that's always worked for me. Had good results with it and I stuck with it. But like I said, other racing friends have used other oils and not shock weights. Some some have used like the associated green slime. Some have found some other light, lighter weight greases they've had good luck with. Some have used, uh, what, what is that? Like a sewing machine oil, fish and reel oil. Um, some have used like a, what is it? That two in one or three in one oil and so on and so forth. Um, what I like about the, the shock oil is even though it's 30 weight and it is lightweight, it's still thick enough that whenever it does seep out, it still, you know, it takes time. And like I told you, this was way overdue for a rebuild. And whenever I pulled the gears out, it may have been hard to tell in the camera. While the case itself didn't have much oil left, the gears were still coated in it. So this stuff being thinner, it still lasts a while, but it still promotes a real nice and smooth uh, differential. So that's pretty much, this is going to complete like phase one of uh, speed secret number one, but now we're going to get all this back together and then we're going to discuss part two. Now, next thing I like to do instead of using that same heavy duty grease that they had inside the transmissions here, um, is I'm going to be putting a little bit of, uh, I like to use the Team Losi uh, blue grease. And don't, I'm not going to cover everything as heavily as it was done before, but I am going to run through and I'm just going to get a little bit. Go around that, get it on those. I'm going to come around here. A little bit there. Not a lot, and that may be a lot to some, and that may be hardly any to others, but it's pretty much what I do. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and line this back up. Oh, first, first, let's get those shims back. Okay, we did have some shims on here. 
Let's get those shims back in place. Now we're going to put the transmission back together. Okay. So now we got the transmission put back together. We got the diff rebuilt. We got the, we cleaned out all the factory grease, all that nasty and heavy stuff that keeps the diff from being as free and working as free as you want it to be. And we're gonna touch on that more here in just a moment. The last thing we need to do is right here on the bottom. You know, this is gonna be flat on the plate, but I still like to replace that section of vinyl. I do, you probably don't necessarily have to, but I always do it. And I've got some spare vinyl we're gonna cut out and slap over that here real quick. Little rectangle here. Make sure it don't cover up any of the screw holes. So we're good. There, now we're done. So the last thing we're gonna talk about phase two of speed, the tractor slash speed secret number one is the slipper clutch. Now, what does the slipper clutch actually do, right? So whenever you've got it at factory setting or if you back this nut out, that spring's gonna be less compressed, okay? So that's gonna allow, um, whenever you hit the gas really quick, it's gonna allow the, the clutch to actually spin a little bit um, without actually getting the motor to go. So your motor is gonna be spooled up. You're gonna be spinning this gear on like the slipper clutch assembly, but it's not gonna be putting any actual rotation into the tires. Um, so what that does is, is that helps save you from um, um, burning up and stripping spur gears. It'll help you like a, if you're running off-road, you take a jump and you have to throttle on to help level out the vehicle. And then whenever you land, it allows a slipper to kind of slip once or twice so you don't strip a, a, a spur gear on the landing under power. Um, you know, the slipper has several different meanings. You get the, uh, the tire bound up and you hit it. Um, it'll allow it to spin uh, without putting power to the tire to keep you from stripping the gear, breaking, you know, axles and so on and so forth. So the slipper clutch is a good thing, but if you're watching this video, you're running your Traxxas Flash on the dirt oval. And we don't really have to worry about that much. Um, so the differential does all the uh, the action that we need it to do, especially now that we got that differential freed up with some lighter oil and rebuilt the transmission and differential that way. Um, so we're not worried about the slipper clutch as much. In fact, with the slipper clutch backed out, you're losing forward drive. Okay, so in dirt oval, you're gonna want forward drive. Dirt oval is gonna be a lot about corner speed. Corner speed is gonna be where you're gonna win or lose a race. Um, uh, primarily, I mean, there's other variables, but that's a big one. Um, so you don't want to lose that forward drive. So if you're hitting the gas and there's lag or whatever, your slipper clutch enga is engaging and so on and so forth, you're losing that forward drive. Okay. So now that we got the differential cleaned up and freed up, this is what I do. And this is phase two of the speed secret. Okay. We're going to collapse that spring. We're going to run that slipper clutch down all the way. Okay. Now I'm not going to try to break it, but I've turned it and it has stopped. Okay. I can't turn it anymore. Now you can see from the factory setting that spring is actually collapsed. Okay. And you can see everything still rotates and works just fine. Okay. So now that that is run all the way in, okay, your slipper clutch is probably not going to engage. It would take some kind of crazy instance for it to, to, to engage at this point with it locked up like that. Now, keep in mind, over time, you may need to, after a race, several races or whatever, especially if this is the first time you've done this, you may need to keep check on this and go back and tighten it back up. Guys, I do have a better wrench, but I just grabbed this because it was quick. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, you may have to adjust that every now and then, but go ahead and run it down and tighten it up. You want all the forward drive you can get in dirt oval, okay? If you, you don't want to be lacking in that area, especially with this class. But for this class and the Traxxas and Buggies, crank that baby down. 
um, and get all that forward drive that you can get. Um, you're going to strip gears, um, but I, I, I'll tell you uh, occasionally, not as so much due to the slipper clutch. I've stripped more gears from rock and dirt debris messing up my spur gears than I have ever hurting one due to running the slipper clutch like this. You want that forward drive. That's going to what's going to you know get you in and out of the corner, depending on where you may have to burp the throttle, if you even have to burp the throttle. But you want all that forward drive you can get and all that corner speed you can get. So what does this look like? Now that we have that cranked down, you might be thinking, well, the differential is not going to spin properly. No. Since we rebuilt the differential first and put in some uh, lighter fluid and so on and so forth, um, it's going to work just fine. And I'm going to show you how uh, right now. All right, now we're back to the other car. This, uh, the differential, the transmission in this car pretty much has the exact same build that I just showed you. Um, and I say pretty much because I haven't opened this one up yet, but I know my buddy that I got this car from uses pretty much the exact same method that I do. It may have 30 what, five weight oil in it instead of 30 or something like that, but it's the exact same method. Uh, again, I wanted to point out the transmission that I just showed you how to build and the differential, you're gonna see that that uh, slipper clutch spring is pretty much fully compressed. We tighten that down as far as we could go for that forward drive purpose. This car is the exact same way. This car is a little bit dirty still. Um, it's not horribly dirty, but I still need to tidy it up, clean it up a little bit. But you can see right there, the exact same thing. That's um, collapsed all the way, springs fully compressed. And here's what I'm gonna try to do, okay? I'm gonna hold this spur gear with my thumb or my finger so it can't spin. And I want you to watch these tires. I'm rotating this one backwards and the other one's going forward. So the differential's still working. You can tell by following that dot on the tire. That one's going forward. This one you can tell by my direction that I'm pulling it, it's going backwards, okay? So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to try to get this thing to free spin so you can see how free this diff is with a locked up slipper. Okay, I'm holding it down, okay? I'm holding that spur down so you can see the differential action. Holding it down, I'm gonna spin this again. You can see those tires still go several revolutions. That's how free that differential is now. So that means the differential can still act. And this thing is just butter smooth, guys. The differential, see, I don't even have to hold the spur gear now. Watch this. I'm just going to work that. You can see it kind of click to the motor a little bit, but you can, it, it don't even turn. The differential is. But whenever I give it on power and I squeeze that trigger, because that slipper clutch is tightened all the way down, it's going to give you all that forward drive. That right there is one of the biggest speed secrets um, that I wanted to show you for the tracks to slash. And again, that same concept will work for your two wheel drive buggy classes and so on and so forth. But having that differential free and smooth, and I'm talking butter smooth guys after, after build like that. This transmission that we just did on the video is gonna be just as smooth and free as this one and give you all that forward drive. But that's the biggest speed secret I wanna talk about in the transmission of these cars for the track slashes, the two wheel drive buggies. You wanna get that differential free and smooth and you wanna run that slipper down because we're running dirt over. We're not jumping off things. We're not crawling things. We ain't worried about things getting bound up, stripping a spur gear. I promise you, you're gonna, as long as you have a proper gear mesh now, that's another variable. As long as you have a proper gear mesh, I uh, pretty much guarantee you're gonna have more problems with stripped spur gears due to track debris than you are having that slipper clutch tighten all the way down. That forward drive is gonna speed you up in your lap times. I guarantee it. Having a free differential, and uh, that forward drive from uh, running that slipper clutch down like that. I guarantee you, you're gonna save, uh, shave some time off your track times. It's gonna help you speed up your car. It's gonna help your overall finishes. And this right here is probably one of the biggest speed secrets I can share for a track slash or two-wheel drive buggy. All right, guys, this next part, this next speed secret, part two for the track slash, um, you bef I'm gonna go ahead and give you a huge disclaimer right now. Do not do this mod unless your track allows it. If you're running a box stock class, they're most likely not gonna allow this. So before you do this, you wanna verify with your rules at your local track that if you're allowed to do this or not. Some classes allow it, some do not. This particular, two of the classes that I sometimes race my tracks of slashes in do allow it, so that's what we're gonna talk about. But what we're talking about right now is the rear, um, 
the rear lower control arms or toe arms. I, I guess they're just control arms because these are not adjustable toe. Okay. If you look at this, this is a factory setting. This is that transmission that we just built. I had this set up just for visual purpose. But if you look at it out the box from the rear, you're gonna see the direction and notice that angled part of the front of the arm and there is a L. You can read that letter from the rear of the car, L. So that's your left side arm. We're gonna go over here and look at this one. You can see R, this is the right side arm. And this is all part of the maintenance still, guys. I know this is a little bit dirty, but this is all part of maintenance. Um, this is all getting cleaned up. But whenever I come up above, okay, these arms are facing the same direction. These arms from the factory have toe in it already, okay? Um, I'm wanting to say Traxxas Slash has two and a half degrees rear toe in on each side. So that means that that means that this side is pointed in like this. This side is pointed in like this. And I'm going to show throw up a diagram here too, just so you can see right now. So that means that they're currently sitting like you see here, towed in inward on both sides by two two and a half degrees. I believe is the factory slash um, tracks a slash toe on those stock arms. So let's move this out of the way. I want to show you what we did here. Again, this is my 10.5 late model. We're going to look at the left side. It's going to be a little bit harder to see, guys. And this car is, like I said, I'm going to be cleaning this one up soon, too. This is the stock uh, arm, left arm. Stock left arm, okay? And what that is, is that means that this has two and a half degrees in, just like the other one. However, this arm over here, if you notice, it looks a little different. The angled piece I pointed out a while ago is now on the rear. See over here, it's up front. It's kind of hard to see. What we have done here is I'm going to hold this up so you can see. On the bottom side, you'll probably be able to see that R. What we did is we took that right rear arm and we turned it upside down. Now, if you look at these arms, I'll use this one here for an example. Here's the factory arm. It's got the shock mounting holes on the front or on the rear there, and then it's got them on the front as well, okay? They're a little different back here, but there are holes for mounting shocks and so on and so forth there. And of course, you got room that you could always drill another hole if you needed to, if you're wanting to get the arm over a little bit further, so on and so forth. But that's exactly what was done here. That arm was turned upside down and remounted and that is in one of those three holes that's already on the upside down mount okay what we have done now is we have given the car has the two and a half degree toe in on the left rear but on the right rear it has two and a half degree toe out and I'm going to throw up another diagram to show you what I'm talking about now the aerial view so as you can see now, the left rear is two and a half degrees towed in, and the right rear is two and a half degrees towed out. What does that do? That gives the car some rear steer, just like on my purpose-built 21.5 car, we were, we were allowed to run adjustable tow arms there. We're not allowed to run adjustable tow arms in these classes that we race, but for this particular class and maybe one other, they do allow you to flip that right rear arm so you can get some rear steer out of the car. Okay, what does that rear steer do? It's going to help you. It's going to help the car rotate. Um, you, some people are going to like this. Some people are not. But that is just another little speed secret uh, that I want to throw out and include in this video. Um, what it is going to do is it is going to free up the car in the turn. So if your car is running pretty good now and you try this and you all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, the car is too loose. It's turning too good, whatever. You're probably going to have to tame you know, your front end of the car, at least the right front, so on and so forth. You may have to go to a little bit stiffer springs um, or something of that nature because whenever you're running some rear steer, it's going to help that car rotate. Um, and like I said, we, and that's not, that's not aggressive at all. That's just a little bit of help. Um, I run it in my purpose-built cars uh, and very aggressive. My 21.5 car, we run a lot of rear uh, steer in those cars. Um, so it's it's very aggressive, but you can't get aggressive with these cars because we're not allowed to run the adjustable blocks um, If we were we'd probably be a little more aggressive But this will give you two and a half out here 
two and a half in there, giving the car a little bit of rear steer and help uh, that corner rotation. Um, yes, uh, as far as your straightaway goes, your car may be crab walking a little bit, so you're probably gonna have to adjust your uh, your trim uh, to compensate for that a little bit. But uh, try that out. That is another speed seeker. If you're allowed, give that a whirl. Um, I like it, but like I said, I'm used to uh, some rear steer in my dirt oval cars, uh, especially my purpose-built car class. Well guys, that pretty much sums up the Speed Secret video. This is my first Speed Secret video. Um, if you enjoyed it, you find it helpful, please let me know in the comment section. Um, if you try this and you go out and you have some success, uh, some success let me know in the comment section. Um, if you've already figured this out, um, let me know what you're doing, uh, what you may be doing a little bit differently from the video. Because like I said before, especially with the more experienced racers, uh, they're going to know a lot of this information already. They're going to either be doing it the same way I'm doing it, uh, similar, or they're going to have their own method. There's more than one way to do it, guys. I just want to share my personal method with you, hoping to help some newer racers out there, some guys that may be struggling in that area, you know, trying to help shave some time off your lap times, getting you faster, you know, getting your finishes a little bit better. If I can help do that, that's what this channel is here to do. Like I said before, the whole purpose of this channel, help newer racers, help promote the hobby and sport, and, uh, you know, entertain. So that's what we're here to do. So please hit me up in the comment section. Um, your thoughts, if this helps you. Um, if you got any other questions, if you got some other questions in certain areas uh, that you may be struggling with, hit me up in the comment section. I'll try to cover that in another future video. Uh, this particular video that I'm doing right now uh, was one that was requested a little while back um, with a couple other things, and I'm trying to work through and get to those as well. But with all that said, guys, if you're racing somewhere this weekend, I just want to wish you luck. Uh, wish you great success. I appreciate each and every one of you very much, and I'll catch you guys next time.